Now, if that's all depressing, I mean it to be a little bit, but not wholly. Uh, because remember, there's a third thing about teaching that I said I would talk about, and this is the one I'm going to close on. And that is that to teach is to enter a world of unimaginable possibility, right? There's the third P. In other words, there are a number of ways to push back, to bring meaning to your job, and to bring meaning and education to children. Maxine Green, an educator I adore, who just turned uh, 95, um, said that the purpose of education is to comfort the troubled and trouble the comfortable. In other words, teaching is in some part, for some students, about making students uneasy, restless, agitated about the state of the world, making them think, ask tough questions about themselves, about you, about the world in which they're growing up. And teaching is also about providing comfort, solace, refuge. This is your challenge, negotiating that balance, while also teaching them to read and write. And it is a lofty one, full of potential fit pitfalls, but also full of possibility. On how many different fronts can you, as a new teacher, take a stand? How many people in your new school can you piss off? And my answer is, well, right at the beginning, you need to learn how to teach. And each of you will need to make decisions for yourselves on what good teaching means and how much you're willing to push boundaries. But I also hope that my comments today make clear that systemic change is possible. There are many teachers out there who work every day to educate their students to be critical thinkers, able and ready to take on important social problems, whether the environment, politics, or anything else, and help solve them. Change has happened many times in world history, and it will continue to happen. If you take a look at uh, Nicholas Ning Fuchs uh, developing a global perspective website and some of the work he's done on that, and in fact his excellent book, uh, An Indigenous Curriculum of Place, uh, you'll see examples of the kind of change that's possible um, in a teaching environment. Ultimately, social changes, the environment or any form of justice, depends on teachers, on so many of you. These goals depend on what a number of curriculum theorists have called your educational imagination. See, you didn't go into teaching for the status. You didn't go into teaching for the money. And you didn't go into teaching just so that your students become better and better able to sit for days and days on end taking tests. As you leave here, you leave behind small achievements, yes. You completed 37 journal writing assignments. <laughs> yeah, you got your first A plus. Oops, everyone gets A plus. <laughs> Yeah, you did what your professors wanted, and yes, maybe you even learned some stuff while you were here. But your big achievements are the ones to come. That little boy who I told you about earlier, the one who said, I'll never forget that on that day you held my hand and you didn't let go, he represents the challenge you all face when you leave this room. You're going to be teachers. You're going to affect thousands of children's lives in ways both big and small, and you won't always know which. Your teaching will be full of the three things that I just talked about, power, frustrating pressures, and possibility. For some of your kids, you're going to need to shake them out of smugness, out of complacency. You'll need to trouble those that are too comfortable. You'll need to make them think. Other kids will remember you in a different way. You'll be that teacher who held their hand and didn't let go. You can't ever forget to fulfill both those roles. So now that this conference has raised for all of us challenging and critically important issues. What if, as you enter teaching, as you learn more and more about becoming a teacher, you repeatedly ask yourself why? Why did you go into teaching? What is it that you can accomplish? What gifts can you give your students beyond teaching them how to learn, how, teaching them how to read or how to add numbers? What gifts can you give this world? It's easy to slip into something sad and predictable. Our professional lives can easily be full of bided time, waiting for retirement, quietly fulfilling our smallest duties, attendance forms, IEPs, and the like. Or we can burn with the passion to make the world a little better each decade and each year and each day in ways big and small that we can. One of my favorite poets, Mary Oliver, says this most artfully. In the conclusion to her poem, The Summer Day, Oliver asks us this. 
tell me, what else should I have done? Doesn't everything die at last and too soon? Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? That's a question we can all carry with us every day as we begin the journey that is teaching. What is it that each of us plan to do with our one wild and precious life? Thank you.